early Shabbat Shalom to each and all from our congregation but Tefillah here in Scottsdale, Arizona. So friends, they say that there are three types of people in the world. The first type, watch things happen. The second type, make things happen. And the third type, come too late and say, what just happened? Today I'd like to speak to you about the second type, those people that make things happen. But first I'd like to focus on the first commandment in the second of this double portion, this Shabbat Acharimot Kedoshim. First commandment of Kedoshim is Kedoshim Tiyu Ki Kadosh Ani. God commands us, be holy because I am holy. But what does this mean? First, what does it mean to be holy? Does that mean we should meditate on mountains all day long? What, what does holy mean? And secondly, what does it mean, be holy because I am holy? It's as if Bill Gates was, was addressing us and saying to us, be a billionaire because I am a billionaire. Is that a logical reason? My friends, I think that what God is saying here in this first commandment in Kedoshim speaks to one of the great truths of life and of the human condition. There are two ways we can look at ourselves. We can look at ourselves as defined by circumstances as defined by challenges, as defined by external means, such as our profession, our style of life, and so on and so forth. Or we can define ourselves by our very inner core, which is holy. We can define ourselves by our divine soul that knows no bounds. What God is saying here is, be holy. Or in other words, you can be holy. If you focus that on the fact that I am holy and there is a part of me in you, it is called the neshama, it is called that divine soul. If you focus on that and you define yourself by your soul and not by anything else, then yes, you will be holy. What does this mean? I have long fought, and maybe you can help me in this fight, but I have long fought for a change of terms in the English language. I've said this often, but I think that it is a travesty that when we speak of our physical diseases, we say, I have a cold, I have the flu. Yet when we speak of our mental diseases, we say, I am, I am schizophrenic, I am bipolar, as if those mental diseases define us. Indeed, a travesty. Those diseases, like the physical ones, should not define us. It's things that maybe we have, but these are not diseases that we are. We are not schizophrenic. We might have schizophrenia, but that schizophrenia should not define our core. So what are we? We are divine. We are limitless. We are a part of God himself. We ought to connect to that soul, to that neshama, and ask ourselves, what is it that this core wants? What is it that this core can do? What is it that this core yearns for? And if we listen to the neshama, we'll understand also what our purpose is, what we were created for, and yes, what we are truly made of, divinity, a part of God, ki kadosh ani. Friends, in this coronavirus, we may be overcome by all sorts of challenges, tensions from within or tensions from without. Many do not know what the future will look like. Will they keep their job? Many do not know what the health will look like. Will they recover? Many do not know what the next day will look like. Will it be filled with the same tension at home as it was today or perhaps yesterday? But the, there is one thing that we do know. And that is that we have a soul that begs for attention. We have a soul that wants to do good. We have a soul that wants to pray, meditate, connect to God. So what are we waiting for? This soul should be the only thing that defines us. And therefore, pick up that phone. Make a call to mend a broken relationship or to lift someone's spirit. That's what your soul wants. That's who you are. Do that mitzvah that you've always wanted to do. Don't let anything stand in your way because indeed nothing stands in the way of divinity. Pray, 
meditate, connect to God, give that expression to your soul because that's who you are and that's what you want. I'm reminded of the heartbreaking story of this Holocaust survivor who had met his wife to be just before the Holocaust broke out and then they were divorced. The Nazis had separated them. No one knew of the destiny of each other throughout the war. After the Holocaust, miraculously, they met again in the same DP camp. They met again and they could not believe their eyes. They had changed so much. At one point when they took a stroll to reconnect, the woman stepped into an abandoned apartment and she saw there a mirror. She looked at herself for the first time after so many years, after so much torture and starvation. And she saw a skeleton. She came out and she told her husband-to-be, I'm so sorry, I, you probably don't want to marry me. I've become so ugly. They've taken every iota of beauty from me. Her husband looked at her, future husband looked at her and said, what are you talking about? You've never been as beautiful to me as you are at this very moment. This husband, this future husband, and yes, they did eventually get married, but this man demonstrated the power of our vision, of our divine vision. We can look at ourselves and see a skeleton. Or we can look at ourselves and see a divine soul that perseveres through challenges, that knows how to make the best out of every situation, and that knows, yes, how to appreciate the blessings that we do have and not pay attention to the blessings that we do not have. This is the calling of the hour during this COVID-19 era, my friends. We have to make that happen, that holiness, which is deep within us, indeed, happen. And if we do so, I have no doubt that we'll be fulfilling God's commandment fully. Kedoshim to you, yes, indeed, we will be holy. And our holiness will then spread its light to all of our surroundings and to the four corners of the world. Shabbat Shalom.